Hi there. Here we are at uh, BPM up in Birmingham, and uh, we're showing for the first time our brand new Zone DB4, possibly the most important mixer for us to date. Uh, this is our first fully digital DJ mixer. We've got some uh, pretty amazing features on it, and I'll uh, see if I can run you through some of those. If we start at the top, probably the easiest thing to do is uh, we have a, a full input matrix, so we can select any source, one, two, three, four, across any of the channels. We can then source from either uh, analog sources, so you can have four analog sources, USB for the built-in sound card, so we've got four stereo sends, four stereo returns, uh, or digital, so we can have uh, four digital sources via SP diff. As I said, any of those can be on any of the channels. If we select uh, USB and we can get some audio running, this is a, obviously fully uh, MIDI as well, so uh, <coughs> we have a little function here to disconnect the controls from the uh, mixer into MIDI shift mode. At the moment I'm using this to control Ableton, so I've just a very simple mapping here. I can scroll up and down through my clips and I can fire off a clip. That's on channel one, but via the input matrix I've now patched it through to channel two. Okay, I'm now out of MIDI shift. And we can start to explain some more of the features of the mixer. Uh, pretty innovative is the EQ section, and we can run that in three modes. Currently we're in filter mode, as you can see there. We can run it into EQ mode, which is a minus 26 dB kill with a fairly gentle slope. Or isolator mode, uh, where you've got 24 dB per octave filters and a very sharp slope. And so you get total isolation on the bands. Then the really unusual one is filter mode. And that is partly governed why we've done the, the EQ in this layout. Because in uh, filter mode, this is now not a mid, it is in fact the resonance control. This is a, a high pass that you can sweep up out of the base. This is a low pass that you can sweep down. And if we shield a little bit of the light, you can see that the pointers on the EQ knobs actually illuminate. And they will illuminate in different colors depending on which mode we're in. So, as you can see, the resonance has changed from red to a blue mode as we were into isolator. So if we go back into filter mode, and we just get a little bit of audio running on that. And I can use that to really precisely tailor exactly the kind of sound I want for that. So I can just take a little bit of the top out, take the bottom out, bring that back in. You can either use it really subtly, or I can wind a lot of resonance on, and we get a much higher Q filter. So that's the first unusual feature we've got on DB4 is the way that you can set the EQs. That little feature, of course, is on every channel. Then this little section here is a looper. And I can set the loop length via the rotary control. Maximum loop length is four bars. So four bars, two bars, one bar, two beats, one beat, half a beat, etc., etc., all the way down to 16th of a beat. So I switch the looper on, it's very easy, just loop. And that's now looping from inside the mixer, it's not looping within the software. I can then trim that loop, so it's down to two beat, down to one beat, half beat, come out of the loop. No matter what you set the loop length to, it'll always record four bars. So even if I've set it to an eight, okay, that's just looping now an eighth of a beat. I can now expand that and it will keep recording up to a maximum of four bars. And that's the looper on every channel. All automatically beat things, of course. Um, this display here toggles. These, these are the four channels on the display. Currently, you can see channel one is high lit. That means it's in focus, and I'll explain that in two seconds. I can toggle between the display, and that's currently a filter display for the effect, which we'll cover. Or we can cover uh, to BPM. That's currently got an open mic on that channel, so that's just recording the ambient, working out, trying to work out the BPM of the general chaotic noise. Channel 2 has got the audio running on it. If I put the focus on that, 128 is worked out uh, on the internal BPM engine. It's not synced from Ableton at all. So if we come on to the effects now, the effects are completely independent of the looper. So I can add a loop to this channel, 
keep that looping, I can now add effects to it. The effects on off button is down here. So an effect on, I've currently got a delay set. Uh, that's over a four bar length, so we make it an odd signature, so you'll hear it a bit better. And I can now start to wind that delay in. This expression control changes depending on the type of effect, but this is currently regen on the delay. So I can add more regen on that. I can now do something else. Because this is in focus, I can use these two global parameters to change another aspect of this delay. So that toggles the view between the BPM and the third parameter. In this case, it's a filter. So I can now start to wind the filter of that delay up. And I can change the time signature. Okay, you can, do, you can play a few little tricks with that. And that'll start to record my changes that I've made on the delay time. And that's, that's working with both a loop and, a, and an effect on that. Now, you don't have just one delay. We have a whole library of delays in here. You might not want that type of delay. So hit the Select button, which will now bring up the library. We have all of these different types of effects to choose from. So you can have a ping-pong delay, uh, a filtered delay, different bandpass delay, etc., etc., etc. So we select a ping-pong delay in there, and then we'll now get a, uh, a different time. Left, right, so you get a very wide stereo delay. Delays, now reverbs. Same thing with the reverbs. We have really pro-spec reverbs in there. This is an EMT250 emulation. Yeah, that really nice reverb. Change the time on it. Once again, if we go into the menu, you can see all these different types of reverbs that we can choose from. There's one really nice reverb, which is called Next Door. I can demonstrate that one. This is simulating what sounds almost like being outside a nightclub. And as you wind the reverb down, you actually come into the club. Go out again. So it's a very innovative effects as well. All of these effects were uh, developed from our iLive touring consoles. So the heart of this digital this mixer, the heart, digital heart, is actually from our pro touring iLive. But all of the effects have been uh, trimmed to be uh, uh, more relevant to, the, uh, to um, dance music and to, uh, to DJ world. Uh, if we move on through the effects, I can show you some resonators. Tuned band pass. It's quite an interesting effect. Modulators. A really nice effect. Rotary crossover. Once again, we can change the speed. Okay. And what else? We've got some superb flanges and phasers. We're going to the damage effects. Once again, we can choose from a, a whole range of different effects on here. Uh, one of my favourite is distortion, so we can give a, this track a really hard edge. And I can use the expression. filthy sound on that. Okay, and, and once again we have some really amazing effects in here, including one called Infra Bass, which you must use with caution. <laughs> this is a subharmonic synthesizer. And this will actually generate um, an, a, a bass at one octave below what is the um, lowest frequency on the music. And just bring a little bit of that in. 
Obviously, you need a big system to really reproduce that. OK, so that's the effects section. And every channel has all of these effects on it. Um, Layout-wise now, fairly conventional. We have uh, filter selects, and we've retained the classic filter system as per used on uh, 92. So I can turn the filter on, sign to the channel. Change the resonance, of course. I'm sure everyone's pretty familiar with that. Then we also have an auxiliary input as well. So we have a mic. That can be switched to line. Two band EQ on this. Can be switched into the channel. So I can either run this channel um, as its normal input or make the mic override instead of going straight to the mix. So you can then add effects and loops on the mic or whatever you're coming in on the auxiliary. Then we get to the, the setup uh, menu. So meter mode, um, whether you want deck starts on, etc. BPM range. One little cool feature we've got on BPM range is that you can also sync from external MIDI clock via USB. So if you're using applications like Ableton, you can make everything slave to the MIDI clock in Ableton. If you're in really low light and the mix is a bit too bright, you can set up the display brightness. USB routing, really a major feature. Every send can be sourced from almost every point within the mixer. So from the PFLs, from the digital inputs, to the booth, the record, the phones mix, etc., etc. So you have enormous flexibility in what you do with the USB sends to the computer. Headphone trim, if your headphones are too loud, not loud enough, we can trim them. We can set the mode, whether it's split or normal, and the source, whether it's clean feed, it comes direct from the mix, or is auto-muted when you, you haven't got a cue selected. Uh, record trim, this is quite cool. You can set the record level up, and also the source that you're recording from. So once again, mix, clean feed, which is minus the mics, or you can record your headphone mix, which is a, a feature we've been asked to by one or two people. Booth trim again, and then we come to, to uh, another nice little feature where you can change the phase on the booth. So if you're getting some kind of base, phase cancellation, you can correct that within the mixer. And it's very much the same on the main mix out, but except that you can change the phase individually. So if you've just set this up and you've got a cross patch lead, we can, we can invert one of those uh, either left or right input. All of this setup information can be saved to USB. And that's done by this little USB port on the top. Uh, this is uh, kind of just, just hot off the press, right? To totally hot off the press. This is uh, one of only three um, that we've got built so far. Uh, we managed to build them the day before we left for the show, so still absolutely brand new. Um, we're hoping to go into full production with this in November, late November and it's our ambition to get them into the shops before Christmas. And money, um, the retail will be just under £2,000. Um, I think street uh, price will be something similar to, uh, say, the Pioneer DGM 2000.